Hey, I'm Harriet. Welcome back to the Tati Divine YouTube channel. In this video, I'm showing you how to make our radiance necklace in iridescent to accompany our jewelry making kits, which you can buy on the website. It's from our Spring Summer 13 collection, which was called Hot House, and this necklace shines as bright as it ever did. We've tweaked the design so you can make it from home now. You should already have your jewelry making kit, which will include 21 laser cut iridescent shards, a gold or silver tone chain, 20 times 8 mil jump rings, two 7 mil jump rings, a tech sheet, a Tati Divine gift box, a pair of long nose pliers, and it's nice to have a cloth to give your necklace some extra shine when you're finished. A glasses cloth does the job. Right, so we've got all our pieces and we're ready to go to make the necklace. So I've laid all my pieces out in front of me. The pieces themselves have actually have got um, a masking on them. So they've got a masking tape on the back and they've got a clear protective film on the front. So we're gonna work with our clear protective film facing upwards and we're gonna to start to lay them out on the sheet. Okay, so I've laid them out here now, but also what I'm gonna double check now is that some of the pieces have got little bits inside the holes where we're gonna put the jump rings. So first thing I wanna do is if there's any of those bits left in there, I'm just gonna go through the pieces and just push them out with the ends of my pliers. So now our necklace is ready to put together. So we're gonna go through and show you how to start linking the pieces together with the jump rings. So you should take your little envelope and um, inside your little envelope, you should find the chain and some jump rings. And then in here, we've got jump rings. If you look carefully, there's two different kinds. You'll notice that some of them are a bit smaller than the others. They're what we refer to as the seven mil jump rings. I'm gonna put those ones to the side because we're gonna use those once we've finished linking up all the pieces. So normally I would work from left to right and we're gonna leave a space at the end so that, because that's where we're gonna put seven mil jump ring and attach it to the chain. I'm gonna show you how to briefly open a jump ring the first thing I'm going to do with the jump ring is hold it with my pliers so that the split in the jump ring is still exposed. I'm going to take my other pair of pliers at 90 degrees and I'm going to use my right hand just to rotate the jump ring open slightly. Now this should just give us just enough space to get the pieces of acrylic through and onto it. That's probably about four or five mil gap. I'm going to take my first piece and I'm going to thread it on to my jump ring. I'm going to get my second piece I'm also going to thread that onto my jump ring. Now here I'm going to try and make sure that I'm doing both of them in the same direction because otherwise you can end up with pieces facing the wrong way. I'm going to close my jump ring now by sort of reversing the process so I'm going to just give it a twist and then that closes up the jump ring. You need to get this join really tight. I'm going to open another jump ring again same thing I'm going to hold the jump ring in my left hand, split facing upwards, other pliers at 90 degrees, open the jump ring up, about a quarter of a turn. And this time we're gonna come in and put the jump ring through the hole on the right hand side so we start to make a little chain of pieces. So basically two jump rings are sharing one hole. And go back in with the pliers. We need that joint to be nice and tight. Just keep repeating the process through. See, this is why you can see partly why we keep the protective film on the acrylic the whole time, because actually the pieces get handled quite a lot whilst we're making them. So just keep going. I'm going a little bit fast. So the more jewelry kits you make, the better you get at doing jump rings. So now we've got all our pieces hung together with the jump rings, eight mil jump rings all the way down the end. So now we need to attach the chain. We're gonna do that with seven mil jump rings. But first of all, we need to cut the chain. On the back end of the chain, we've got two jump rings. So usually this last piece of chain is just kind of like a leader, which basically means if you've got a different top on, you can change the length of it. So really we wanna get the chain length perfect at the smallest size. Attach the hook to that jump ring and then we're going to drop it down from there. You can hold the clasp but that gives you a good center point down to the chain. I'm going to use these wire cutters but you can use scissors. 
And then because this is a curved chain, each of the links of the chain has got a slight twist in it. So each single loop at the end of the chain, I'm going to just give it a little tiny squish with my pliers. And this just flattens out the loop and gives us a little bit more room to get the smaller jump ring through inside there. So then to attach the chain to the piece, we're going to use the 7mm jump ring, which is the ones that were slightly smaller and you've only got a few of them. I'm going to use the same technique as we do for the 8mm jump rings where we're going to take it and just give it a little twist and open it up. When we put this necklace on, the clasp side, if you're right-handed, needs to go on the left-hand side of the necklace. This is going to be this way round when we wear it. So what we need to do if when we're looking at it, we need to do it the opposite way round. So I normally start by this, putting the small jump ring through the little hole. So I've got the small jump ring through the chain and this side, I'm going to just follow it down, is my clasp side of the chain. So I'm going to attach this side to the left hand side of the chain and then close up the jump ring again. I'm just going to repeat it on the other side. So take the jump ring, open up with a little twist, find the other end of our chain, nice tight little squeeze, and there we have it. So it's all put together now, but as you can see, we've got plenty of chain either side, so you can either have it long, but I kind of like it short, so it sits up here, so it's got this nice radiant look to it. The necklace that I'm wearing has 14 centimetres either side, so from the clasp, down the chain, measure 14 centimetres, snip, and you can just reattach it to the 7mm jump rings. But just depending on however you'd like it to wear it, you can change that size, that's completely up to you. So now what we have to do is we have to peel it, So because both surfaces have got a lovely protective film on it. So if you get your pieces and just carefully remove the backing. Just make sure that you get all of the pieces off and just go through it one by one. Try not to get your fingerprints on the surfaces. As if by magic, we're all finished. We've peeled the necklace. So all that's left to do now is give it a little clean. But just go over it with this, with a, any kind of lint-free cloth really. I'm using one that comes with a pair of glasses. I hope you've enjoyed making this necklace along with me today. Do share your photographs on Instagram with the hashtag MyTashDivine. We'd love to see what you've been up to. So if you enjoyed it, then don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more tatty-tastic videos.